Good evening, and welcome to another momentous edition of Diatribes from the Voice of Doom. And now here's your intrepid and a illuminating host, Voice of Doom. Thank you, Mr. Announcer. Thanks for using my new words, Acerb Illuminating. I will enlighten you with sarcasm. But I have a few things. I want to put a few thoughts together because there's a little lull. I wouldn't call it a lull, but a time when we should assess what's about to happen because it's not going to be good. And it is September the 9th. And in about 12 hours, it'll be the 10th in Afghanistan. And I worry about patterns. I worry about things that might happen. And if I'm right, I get really scared. But usually it's either worse than I think it's going to be or I'm totally wrong. But the point is, is we're getting kind of close. And everybody knows it. Everybody knows it, because we talk to people. Of course, I live in a very um, right side of the road town. You know, the whole area, you know, we're pretty much on the same page. And it's not the same page that Petri Dish is on. It's the opposite page. It's not even in the same book. So kind of where I'm coming from and I feel comfortable there because I use reason and I look at what I'm seeing and I go this isn't reasonable now when I see unreason I have to figure out why but I'm going to try to do some free form thinking I got tons of notes because I haven't done the diatribe in two days and I've amassed so much crap over the last two days just from all over the place and just everything I mean little things going on Myanmar nobody even thinks about Myanmar you know there's the other side of the world they think about other countries other than what the United States is doing all the time but just little things are happening all over the place but I want to try to put it all together because I'm starting to realize what's happening and I'll start with that because this is going to be a two or three parter I'm not going to be able to get it all in I'm looking at unreasonable actions, and I can excuse that, but I'm looking at other actions that I find disconcerting. And one of those actions is when a leader of the Joint Chiefs of Staff gets in front of Congress and says, I'm a hater and we gotta fight, get to the root of this hate, this white supremacy, which I, have lived on this planet for a few decades, over a half century by far. And I see nothing but more homo homogenization of humankind. That's what I see. I see everybody doing everything and nobody can be stopped from doing what they wanna do. So they're making up something. And we all know they are. And what are they making up? They're making up the fact that they have to, and here it is, the truth for all the world to hear. They want to call the military. They want to know who's loyal to whatever plans they might have or whatever may happen in the near future. They don't want to be like the Soviet Union where suddenly the armed forces were won over to the masses of people that said, we want to be free. We want to be like the West. We want to have, you know, freedom. We don't want this communism or so-called communism or whatever brand of BS they have. They don't want it. And the armed forces suddenly went to their side and then Gorbachev knew it's over. And he pretty much planned for it to be over too. That's a long story. I don't want to get into that. I'm saying that they're trying to see who's loyal to the new mode of thought, the new ideology, which has nothing to do with America being supreme, 
which it's not, and I don't give a crap if it is or not, and I don't give a crap if it was in the previous, like, two or three, four weeks ago. Everything changed in two weeks. You realize that. If you don't realize it, then you're blind. And keep on waving your flag. Because the flag you're waving doesn't represent a whole hell of a lot right now, does it? After what we did. I mean, think about it objectively. Throw out all the red, white, and blue 4th of July, which I haven't even seen 4th of July in a few years. I think they abolished it or canceled it. They used this other crisis to get rid of all of our... You can't play Ring Around the Rosie because of social distancing. Come on. Is everybody going to wake up and see that we're almost doomed? I mean, we're doomed, but I mean, it's coming close. It's not 2052. It's 20 soon. And I have so many notes, but I want to say that that's the whole thing. You got it right there in a nutshell. They want to know where the loyalties lie in the guys that have the guns and the tanks. And the guns and the tanks say we're into... America as it used to be where we were the leader of the free world. I don't know. We were America. We had ideals. We wanted to help. We wasted a lot of money. We did everything wrong. But people believe in that. Now there's going to be other people that are going to be like 18. They're post-millennials. They're brought up with this certain ideology of like, you know, I don't have to try real hard, you know. You know, don't make basic training so hard. We just want to, you know, we're good at, you know, working at consoles and working with joysticks and stuff like that. Toggle switch. That's what we're good at. And you put us there and we're going to blow the shit out of people. And they probably can. But <clears throat> where the loyalties lie. And borders mean nothing. So come on. I mean, we're in a new world now. I'm not going to talk about Petri Dish because he's just the catalyst that made it all happen. He couldn't have had anything to do with the idiocy that's going on. And I won't even say idiocy. We're talking, everybody's talking about September 11th, 2021. The 20th anniversary of when something so diabolical happened and we were sleeping. And we had nothing like the crap we have going on now when that, those damn planes hit the building. That's all we had to worry about after that. We didn't have pandemics. We didn't have vaccines. We didn't have boosters. We didn't have... Do I have to list it? Afghanistan, Pakistan, um, China, Iran. And the possibility of so much terrorism happening on... September 11th, on our anniversary, that Petri Dish wanted to stand in glory. Oh my God. It's sickening to think about. I wanted to stand in front of all the people at the New World Trade, whatever the hell it's, the Freedom Center. I don't know what it's called. And so we kind of make it really resilient because they're going to do the same thing all over again. And they have no imagination. We're just going to keep on doing the same plan because that worked last time. You guys, they dress in robes and they had turbans and long beards and you think they're stupid. They're going to do something completely different. And it doesn't have to be a big spectacular thing. Believe me. If I was one of them, I would know. Well, I'm not going to say anything. I should have said that back in... Oh, one, and when they were a actually asking people, what would you do if you were a terrorist? They actually did that. I don't know if you were born, but after 9-11, the intelligence of G.W. Bush was asking people for suggestions on if you were a terrorist, what would you do? Because they wanted to be ready. And they've done a damn good job, to, you know, protecting us, too. So I don't think I'm totally anti-everything. I'm not. I give credit where credit's due. And we... There's a million different things people could do to us. But now it's all happening now anyway, and I think we did it to ourselves, which Pogo said, we've met the enemy and it is us. Because we blew it. 
we blew it with the BS, and everybody knows it. But I got way more to say than that, so I don't want to get sidetracked. I want to say, what did I want to say? That <clears throat> there's only two days, and I don't want to hear any news tomorrow. I really don't want to hear anything about uh, Ahmed Masood. Mahood, we pronounce it different ways, depending on who you hear. The hero, the guy that is the son of the last guy that got assassinated two days before the buildings came down. And I don't want to see history repeat itself. That would be too weird. But I'm worried about him because we don't really know what's going on. All we hear is the Taliban's taken over all the provinces, which means they took over Panjshir. Now, I told you about that already. I don't want to go back. I got a lot of freaking Afghani names on my paper here. They're taking, they're going to become the dominant force. So my last four or five minutes is going to be who's going to be the leader of the free world starting like from a few days ago because we lost it. On August 31st, we lost our position, and that's, everybody knows it. All the other countries are doing their own thing. They're all going to Doha in Qatar and trying to position themselves with this Taliban, who, by the way, atrocities, if you watch the news, and I'm not talking about the American news, I mean atrocities, Really ugly stuff that people should take to heart when you see a body hanging from a rope from a helicopter and being flown over the city. You go, nah, this ain't going to be good. And to negotiate and to establish any kind of international relations is just like saying we give up. Come and blow, blow us up. Come on, blow us up because... We've given you so many ways you can do it. It's ridiculous. So our chance of survival as a civilization is minimal. And I want to say who is going to lead the free world. And by free world, I mean what is the free world? What does that mean now? I mean, you tell me. What does free world mean? So... The leader's probably going to be Zhang Gui, Zhang Guo. And I don't see any reason why not, because if I was in the position that uh, Xi Jinping was in, his name means happiness, I would say Taiwan's always been China. And it's our territory. And if you look at what Shukla did, it's 1938. And only Victor Davis Hanson even knows what the hell I'm talking about. And nobody's going to see this video to know my brilliance. But it's 1938. And the, the leaders, in quotation marks, are going to Qatar to negotiate what the hell they're going to do. And how they're going to get all the people out that want to get out. They keep saying want to get out. And it's like um, things are going to get worse and worse and more and more people are going to want to get out. And what people did we get in? I mean, I heard a lot of things about, you know, maybe a lot of the people were just people that just got lucky, had the right, you know, had the right pedigree or whatever they had. And they're in the planes going to America. They're not families. They're not assets. They're not CIVs or whatever the hell. SIVs, I don't know. I can't keep up with it. I keep up more than everybody, but it's hard. Because things are going on all over the place. And nobody seems to be worried. Oh, things are bad. Eh. It's annoying because I know how bad it is because I'm a genius. I'm a loser trapped in a genius's body. Or I'm a genius trapped in a loser's body. That's what I am. I never use my brains to do anything productive except maybe write a few songs and this and that but you know I could have done more because I know how to well I won't say I know how to solve this 
I will say without fail that if I had been elected president in November of 2020, I would have done better. And I don't know anything about being in politics. I would have done better. I know it. But be it as it may, the solution ain't going to happen until after the conflagration. So we may as well just get that over with. That's my theory. Is just Let's get the conflagration over with so we can start the first turning. And then we can start again with a society that goes, yeah, we effed it up. Are we going to do the same thing again like they did after World War II? Go backwards and get some knowledge about what's happened. And you'll realize what's going on. And you'd be scared, but I am the voice of doom, and that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to get this up on YouTube, because I think it's a pretty good one. So, uh, share, share. And let's see what happens.